and welcome to Strategies for Setting Goals and Time Management. This is a video for teens and young adults with ADHD. This video is a reproduction of a webinar that had sound issues. The content was provided by Jill Linkoff and has been slightly edited to provide a comprehensive and informative presentation. We are talking about how to get the things done that you don't want to do, and this is a very common challenge for individuals with ADHD. People often ask, how come somebody can do a video game, but they can't do their homework or they can't do their job application? And why do some goals and timelines always feel so overwhelming, whereas others are just so much easier to do? The answer is simply that those of us with ADHD often need structure to help us with time management. We need that help with the management of time and completing goals more than others, especially when a task is difficult. The inner saboteur is this voice in your mind saying, oh, you can't get started with that, or you're going to fail with that, or this isn't going to work for you. Oftentimes, when we plan, this voice gets in our way and we need to understand that. We have to learn to confront that saboteur. We can do this by understanding that our emotions are what's driving these beliefs. When you start to reflect, you start to rethink your assumptions. These are assumptions like, I can't do this, or I failed in the past. So how do we overcome our inner saboteur? We need to, one, get clear on what we want to achieve and build a plan to get to it. Two, achieve higher levels of performance with less stress. Three, gain independence and confidence so we can tackle those really difficult challenges. What's more important, filing your taxes by the deadline or cutting the grass? Now, what would you rather do, taxes or go outside and cut the grass? It's amazing how we want to compensate and say to ourselves, oh no, cutting grass is far more interesting than doing taxes. We often make excuses for ourselves and don't complete priority tasks. How about cutting the grass versus scrolling through your social media apps? Suddenly cutting that grass doesn't sound very fun. So you have to have a plan or you can't get started. What do you do when you can't get things done? How often do you say to yourself, I know I can do it, but I don't trust that I will do it. How often do you have something that you sit and stare at because you can't figure out how to get started? Dr. Russell Ramsey suggests that if you have this challenge, that you need to perform tangible steps rather than trying to figure it out in your mind. The formula is, if I encounter situation X, I will do cold, consistent behavior Y. So, for example, if I sit at my desk, then I can start my project. Or if I open my computer and look at the assignment, then I can create a checklist of what's important about the assignment. So, when you have a school assignment, you need to take these tangible steps. Step 1. Go to your workstation. Step two, write down and answer these questions. What is the importance of this task? And what is the cost if I don't get this done? Step three, print out the assignment if it's not already printed. Step four, review and highlight each task that must be done to complete the assignment. Do you look at something and say, oh my gosh, I can't do this. It's gonna take me hours. Then it took you only 30 minutes? Or have you planned to do something in 30 minutes and it ended up taking a couple of hours? So, for example, you may make a plan to clean your bedroom and organize items that you want to donate. You may think that it's only going to take 30 minutes, but it takes 3 hours or maybe it only takes 15 minutes. We have challenges with the ability to perceive, estimate, and separate periods of time. It's called time blindness. So, as you create your plan, it's really important to have a realistic time frame, and you'll have to try and come up with an estimated start and end time for each task. You will want to provide yourself with enough time to complete the task, but not so much time that you won't meet your deadline. If you keep track of how long certain tasks that you often do take, then over time and with practice, you'll get better at this time thing. For the time being, <laughs> When working on your plan, write next to each task how long you think it's going to take. That way, when you work on scheduling your time, you can block out that stretch of time in your planner. 
We will talk a little bit more about tracking your tasks and deadlines in a little bit. The next step is to create a reward for yourself once you complete each task. Because of how our brains are wired, we have to keep ourselves motivated. So, if you create a goal to work on tasks X, Y, and Z for 30 minutes and then successfully complete that goal, it becomes a reward for you. If you need more motivation, reward yourself with a trip to that local coffee shop, a snack, listening to some music, or maybe a walk around the block. The important part of this is that it's not just a reward, but it's actually motivating you to get started because you know you have an ending point. When you are bounded by time, that's what makes it so doable. Incorporate obstacles that you often encounter when trying to complete a task. Ask yourself, what is going to get in the way of me getting this done? The formula for this is, if I come upon situation Z, I'll do goal consistent behavior Y. For example, if I get distracted by YouTube videos when I'm supposed to be looking something up for my assignment, I'll turn that blocker app on and put my phone in another room while working. Another example of an obstacle that may get in your way is feeling overwhelmed and struggling with focus when you have a lengthy or complex assignment. So a possible goal consistent behavior when you encounter that obstacle is to set a timer and give yourself the option to take a break. You may know that taking breaks helps you recharge your brain and makes tasks more manageable. So in this case, to overcome the obstacle of being unable to concentrate, you will use this formula. The formula is, if I start to feel overwhelmed or distracted, I will set a timer for 30 minutes and get as much done as possible and then take a five to 15 minute break. You may say to yourself, this is going to take me forever, or I have so much time to do this, it's not due for another week, or if I just play video games for an hour, then I can go do this. The problem with that is you and I both know that's not how it works. So what can you do if you encounter that obstacle? What goal consistent behavior can you perform to overcome your inner saboteur? What is just one step? For example, I will read 10 pages and then I will give myself permission to put that book away. Another goal consistent behavior is meditation. There is actually a 10 second meditation practice that you can do when your inner saboteur is talking to you or maybe when someone is creating anxiety for you. Take your thumb and touch your index finger. You can do it with one or two fingers. The idea is to feel the texture of the skin because that's going to be our focus when we take our 10 seconds. Then what you do is count to 10 and as you're counting to 10, breathe in and out and continue to feel the surface of your skin. Very often we will have interacting thoughts and that'll get on the way of our completing any type of meditation. So what you do is acknowledge it and say to yourself, okay, I'm feeling stressed. I'm thinking of this, but I'm going to go back to what I'm doing. Then go back to counting to 10. Keep your focus on the touch of the skin and the feeling of your skin, where it's rough, where it's soft, and most importantly, don't forget the importance of breathing. The last step is to track your start and end times by planning and managing your time well. Many individuals with ADHD are quite smart. They can often pull a passing grade in high school or even a good one, just by cramming the night before tests. Odds are that this strategy will not work in college. For college, it's recommended that you must study two to two and a half hours a week for every unit of course credit. For nine hours a day, five days a week, you're working on school, which means during the day when you're not in classes, you're somewhere studying or catching a quick bite to eat. Make it a part of your routine to do the time plans. If you don't develop this habit, you'll find yourself always being reactive rather than proactive. Pick a day to make a big picture plan for your week and weekend. Then do a daily review of that plan over breakfast, possibly adding or removing important details to make sure you know what's coming your way that day. When you can assess what you need to do versus what you could do, then you can prioritize what needs to be done first and take care of it. One way to do this is with a calendar or planner. A question often asked is what calendar apps work for people with ADHD. And the truth is it doesn't matter if your calendar is online or on paper. What matters is that you use it and that you take it with you. 
It's best to have something that you can keep with you in view at all times. Your calendar is your friend. If you have found that you forget to use your calendar or find your planner difficult to use or and you've stopped using it, it's important to keep in mind that it might not be the right planner or calendar for you. It's really important to find a system that resonates with you. What works for me is to have a weekly planner and then a 90 day monthly planner on my wall. So daily, I look at my weekly planner and I can also look at my wall to visually see what deadlines are coming up in the near and distant future. Use a monthly calendar to work with deadlines. Start with an electronic or paper calendar. Go through the semester calendar on your school's website and enter important dates onto the monthly calendar. These include add or drop deadlines, the start of midterms and finals, and registration dates for the next semester. Use the monthly calendar to keep track of your exams, interim deadlines, and unscheduled activities. Cross off each day as it passes to how the semester is progressing. Fill in important dates for each course. Using the syllabus for each class, enter any test dates and deadlines for papers or projects. If you do this in an electronic calendar, copy the dates to a paper one or vice versa. Break it down by week. From the monthly master calendar, print a one week calendar that shows each hour of the day. Lock in ongoing commitments for the whole semester, classes, clubs, work, etc. Be sure to plan lots of time for sleep because sleep is awesome and good for your brain's functions. Lack of sleep can make it even harder to focus and stay organized and we don't want that. Schedule concrete times for work each week. Slot in regular study and homework blocks throughout the week. Start with a ballpark idea of how much time is needed for each course and factor in short breaks. Adjust as needed during your first week. If you do choose to use an electronic calendar, add the weekly commitments to the electronic calendar. Load each weekly plan into the electronic calendar, then set up every commitment as a recurring event. Checking it during the day is a good way of staying on track. You should have an additional or extra wide computer monitor so you can view it while working on assignments. Find a body double. It's easier to stay on task and focus if you have a body double. A body double helps someone with ADHD stay focused and on task. Reach out to schedule a weekly work group where you can support each other to stay accountable for getting work done. Break down long-term work into chunks. As soon as an assignment is given, create an interim steps for far off deadlines. These steps might include doing some research by a certain date or completing the first draft in time to bring it to the writing center for feedback. Add these to the paper and electronic calendars. Update the electronic calendar throughout the day. Add things to come up at the last minute. These might include new assignments, deadline changes, or an appointment to see a professor during office hours. If a new appointment falls during a scheduled study block, move that block to somewhere else in the week where there's time available. Pick three or four regular times each week to update the monthly paper calendar. Add any changes made to the electronic calendar to the printed one as well. That way, long-term deadlines are always visible. Here are a couple of my suggestions on different types of weekly or daily planners that are available. Additional resources are provided below in the description box. Google Calendar is one of my most favorite calendars. This is a great example of how color coding is really helpful for tracking projects. The planner pad is one of my favorites because you can categorize and write the tasks for the week in the top section. Underneath, you take those tasks and assign them to each day of the week that they should be completed. So, for example, if you have an exam on the 9th that you need to study for, you take that task from the top and add it to your things to do list. Then take those daily items from your to do list and you can add them to your appointments section. For example, schedule to study for your exam between 1 and 3. Don't forget to always include what is constant. If you have classes every day, Put that on your planner so you know when you have the time available for other tasks and appointments. I also love a whiteboard because it's a beautiful way to do a brain dump. And again, when you have all these sweet things swirling in your head and you can't figure out what you need to do, 
This is the first step that I go to. I use my whiteboard and create a mind map. Mind mapping is a way of linking concepts using images, lines, and links. Sometimes we feel like we just can't move forward, and so doing a brain dump around a central theme and connecting the information may help you organize, brainstorm, express your thoughts, and recall information so that you can move forward. Before we finish up, here are eight more tips for managing your time. One, if you have trouble getting up in the morning, set two alarm clocks to go off in sequence. Put the second alarm clock across the room so you have to get out of bed to turn it off. Two, have a clock in your bathroom and bedroom. So how often do you get in the shower and you have no concept of time? For me, it's all the time. You can also put a clock on the wall regardless of whether you live at home or on campus. Put a big wall clock on your bedroom wall where you can easily see it. Figure out how much time you need to dress, eat, and get organized. And then set alarms or other reminders to cue you that you need to have that task completed. Four, use familiar music mix as a timer. For example, if you have 20 minutes to get ready, the schedule might look like this. Wash and dress through songs one through three. Eat breakfast to songs four through six. Get stuff together during song seven and walk out the door by song eight. This works best if you use the same mix every morning, but if you get bored of it, you can mix it up. Five. Check your email and read the news after you are ready to leave. Six, create a launch and landing pad so that when you're leaving your house, you know where your keys, wallet or purse, and cell phone is. It makes such a huge difference when you can keep everything in one place. You can have a great plan for the day, but if you forget something, it can create stress and make you late for class, work, or appointments. Seven, plan for times when you give in to procrastination. For example, if you have to write a paper, make sure you've already done the reading or research and have some kind of idea of what you want to write. Figure out how many hours you'll need to write it, block those hours out on your schedule, and then, with the deadline in sight, sit down and do it. Eight, when you're planning your time, be aware of the highs and lows when your medications are working and when it's not, and when you have the best mental energy and when you don't. In conclusion, if you need some extra help, consult with an ADHD coach, mental health professional, tutor, or your campus Office for Student Disability Service, or the Counseling or Health Center. Please contact Chad if you need any additional information or resources. One of our information specialists will be glad to assist you. Thank you.